Resident Evil Village Mac Edition. I had to say it. Originally announced at WWDC 2022, Capcom and Apple recently ported the iconic horror survival game Resident Evil 8 to Mac. It's probably one of the biggest AAA releases on Mac since Bungie brought the original Halo to power PC based Macs back in 2003. Today we're going to have an in-depth look at the Apple Silicon version of RE8 and what makes this one of the finest AAA Mac translations in years. Resident Evil 8 is supported on every Apple Silicon configuration running macOS Ventura and macOS Monterey. It's not supported on any Intel based Mac. It's a good showcase of how every modern Apple Silicon Mac is capable of playing a next gen AAA release. Sure, it's a little annoying that it's a Mac App Store exclusive, especially considering I can't access my Steam saves and iCloud backup isn't working between Macs right now, but if Mac App Store exclusivity is what it takes to bring huge AAA games to Apple Silicon, I'm all for it. The Mac port of RE8 includes the 8 to 9 hour main story, DLC expansions from the Trauma Pack DLC, Survival Resources Pack and Mr. Raccoon Weapon Charm. I'm not really going to describe the story here because the game has been out for about a year, most of you already know what it's about. Unfortunately, the Mac App Store port doesn't include the recently released Winter's Expansion DLC. So we're missing the third person mode, the mercenaries mode, and the Shadows of Rose bonus story. This is really disappointing, but Capcom have confirmed the Winter's Expansion DLC is also planned to release on Mac at some point in the future. Achievements from the original version of Resident Evil 8 on Windows PC and console have been added into Game Center through the App Store. You can review your achievements for the game by opening the App Store and clicking on your Game Center profile. Another small feature to quickly go over is controller support. Pretty much every modern gaming controller is supported here if you're running macOS Ventura. I know almost every Mac game has controller support, but many developers often forget to include rumble vibration for their macOS ports. I'm happy to report, Rumble is here for RE8 on Apple Silicon. Your controller will vibrate when breaking boxes and windows, shooting and reloading, taking damage, interacting with objects and puzzles, or for explosions. It's a massive shame though that Capcom didn't include haptic feedback and adaptive trigger support on next gen controllers, which from an API standpoint can be done on macOS now. Move your hands! Give up! Resident Evil Village, powered by Capcom's RE engine, runs natively on the Metal Framework and is a native application running under the ARM architecture. Molten VK has not been used here at all compared to Apple's last AAA Apple Silicon release, Metro Exodus, which ran under Molten VK and the Rosetta 2 translator. What's interesting is that it's not a native binary either. Its binary is done for Mac, Yes, but the game is not written in C++. It was written using C Sharp. Game Advertising mentions Metal 3 several times. And now, Metal 3. Metal 3 and since the game is optimized to take advantage of Metal 3 features like Metal Effects Upscaling, 
That being said, it's probably a technical mashup. The game uses Metal FX from Metal 3 on macOS Ventura, but deep inside, it's probably using anywhere from Metal 2.0 to Metal 2.4, without using Metal 3 features like mesh shaders and new argument buffers direct encoders. HDR isn't new to Mac. In fact, it was first introduced back in macOS Catalina under Apple's codename EDR. Because many HDR standards use physical brightness levels and EDR uses relative brightness levels, developers must decide on how they will adapt their HDR content to the EDR capable display environment in macOS. In many cases, HDR data will just automatically adapt the data to the EDR capable display without developers needing to do anything. Up to now, only a few AAA games have supported this technology on Mac. Resident Evil Village is the next AAA release to support HDR on Mac. Unfortunately, due to technical reasons, I can't show HDR content in this video. Instead, I have to resort to screenshots, but it should still demonstrate the differences. Here in the graveyard, blacks are more prevalent, light shadows from the dirt are clear to see, and the clouds have a more ominous glow about them. Or what about here, in Heisenberg's factory? The dark red sweeps the screen, and the blacks are well... true black? Basically, colors are not washed out with HDR enabled, and you can focus on what's important in a scene, such as this fire, which is engulfing a home. RE8 is the first Mac game to utilize Apple's new API, Metal FX Upscaling. Metal FX integrates with Metal to upscale a relatively low resolution image to a higher output resolution in less time than it takes to render directly to the output resolution. Metal FX provides devs with two different ways to upscale their input renderings. Temporal anti-aliased upscaling and spatial upscaling. So, how is it implemented in RE8 on Apple Silicon? There are two upscaling modes available here. Quality and performance. We can't tell for sure what exact upscaling algorithm is used. However, our bet is on temporal anti-aliasing with upscaling. Looking for Rose. <laughs> 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 what about performance-wise, because words on everything? Let's have a look at how the game performs across a range of Apple Silicon-based Macs. First, it's important we start with pure M1. Please pause the video now for the specs of my M1-based Macs. This is the Mac most of you will be experiencing RE8 on. On initial launch, the game should automatically run at default settings, which are about 1080p and 30fps, VSync on, with medium settings and most advanced settings switched off. For most of you, this is not a bad way to experience the game. It's by all means playable, if you consider 30fps playable. I don't mind it, if I'm honest, but the frame delivery can have slight problems in some scenes, such as open locations or during a big battle encounter or boss sequence. A good example of this is when you go against the mutated fish guy, who's called like Moreau or something, Moreau, I don't know how to say that name. At this point, you can turn off VSync and put the frame rate to variable or 60. Doing this, you'll notice a few things. The fret, ow. The frame rate will jump all the way up to 50 FPS in some scenes. However, big drops will occur 
dropping down to the low 40s. Playing at 1080p high on initial glance, it looks like it stays around 30 FPS. This isn't actually the case, as there are numerous scenes that go well below 30 FPS or completely tank the performance. The most notable being this fight sequence with one of Lady Dimitrescu's daughters. Look, it's going down below 20 FPS. What about if you want a stable 60 FPS at 1080p? This is where Metal FX Upscaling comes into play. Using Metal FX Upscaling Performance Mode and my recommended settings on screen now, you can get an almost locked 60 FPS here. Look at this. Previously, this scene would drop down to 30 FPS at 1080p medium. Now it only drops down to the low 50s. The lack of visual quality is somewhat evident here, but this type of performance on pure M1 is remarkable. Playing at these settings will offer improved CPU and GPU usage too. But what about if visual quality is paramount for you at 1080p, but you don't mind dealing with 30 FPS? Easy, put Metal FX upscaling to quality and use my on-screen recommended settings to achieve an almost locked 30 FPS. Unfortunately, quality doesn't seem to improve the CPU or GPU performance. Furthermore, I tried my hardest to find settings that made the frame pacing a completely flat line, like forever, but I came to the conclusion it's simply not achievable here on base M1. But what you're getting here is still a lot better than the default settings at 30 FPS. Now, let's move over to M2. Please pause the video now for the specs of my M2 based Mac. Similar to M1, its default settings are exactly the same, which are about, you know, 1080p and 30fps, VSync is on with medium settings, and most advanced settings are switched off. This is not a terrible way to experience the game, because the experience will be kind of the same throughout your playtime. The improvement here now is that if you disable the 30fps cap and turn off VSync, you can get closer to 60 FPS, with dips into the low 40s, but it's much less frequent during challenging scenes. Playing with the 30 FPS cap off on M2 provides more passable performance than M1, but I would still suggest enabling VSync as the screen tearing is quite distracting. 1080p high is much better here, you can get around 45 FPS and sometimes higher. I, I, I still don't suggest playing it high though, as the performance can drop dramatically in some scenes. So perhaps some of you will be impressed by this or will enjoy playing at 1080p. That's completely up to you. Using Metal FX is once again very helpful on M2. If you are in need for mostly 60 FPS, you can use my on screen recommended settings with Metal FX Performance Mode enabled. These settings are quite a bit higher than my M1 recommended settings for 60 FPS too, with more advanced settings enabled. It's not a locked 60 FPS, I must stress that. There will be some minor dips to, I don't know, 57 FPS. If you're after more gorgeous graphics, M2 can handle high-ish graphics at 1080p if you have Metal FX Quality Mode enabled. Just make sure to use my recommended settings as shown on screen now. The frame pacing isn't perfect, and I apologize for that, but it should be 30 FPS all the time. These settings can use up to 8GB of memory usage, so it should not be as big of an issue if you have 16GB of RAM. I don't have that. Now, it's time to move over to our pro Apple Silicon machine. Please pause the video now for the specs of my M1 Pro 
based Mac. M1 Pro by default will play at 1080p, but with a variable frame rate and VSync switched off, and advanced graphical effects are switched to a mix of high and medium respectively. You will receive up to 80 FPS, with some dips down to 45 during some scenes. Default settings on M1 is a pretty good baseline to work with, providing quality visuals and a mostly smooth frame rate. I say mostly because the occasional big FPS spikes can be quite alarming, noticeable, distracting. I suggest putting the FPS target to 60, enable VSync, put anti-aliasing to TAA, and turn off ambient occlusion. This will provide a smoother frame rate overall with less dramatic FPS dips. 1080p high will provide you with 40 to 70 FPS. It's actually, I don't know, quite impressive for me, but the FPS fluctuates too much. Metal effects obviously helps on the M1 Pro too. If you want to play at higher settings at 1080p with 60 FPS, it's possible with quality mode and my on-screen recommended settings now. It really goes to show what a difference Metal effects can have here, especially when you compare it to default settings. 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with M1 Pro feature a Pro Motion Display, so many Pros, which allows for up to 120 FPS, or you may have an adaptive sync display or a high refresh display that matches 120 Hertz or maybe more. So what if you want to experience a really high frame rate on these displays? Well, I'd like to introduce you to what I'm calling Performance Plus. Using my on-screen recommended settings with Metal FX Performance enabled, you will get up to 120 FPS at 1080p. Mind you, it's not a locked 120. A game of this caliber on M1 Pro just can't offer that type of experience at a relatively high resolution in settings. If you want to play near max graphics at a high resolution, such as 1440p or 2K, this is where quality mode comes into play with Metal FX again. Use my on-screen recommended settings now. It's not 60 FPS gameplay, and I apologize for that if it's the end of your world. To play at this resolution, 30 FPS is required but the visuals are super crisp. Now to M1 Max. Pause the video now for the specs of my M1 based Mac. Based on my testing, M1 Max will by default play at 1080p resolution with a variable frame rate, VSync switched to off, and with medium and high settings enabled with about 120 FPS. You can obviously go well above this. I don't know why they have applied this as the default settings, it's weird. For starters, let's bump the resolution from 1080p up to 1440p. With the same default graphical settings applied, we're now getting anywhere from 80 to over 100 FPS. This performance isn't anything to write home about. I was expecting the FPS to be a little better at this state. That being said, it's a completely enjoyable experience at a higher resolution. If you want to play it near max settings, it's possible at 1440p. Just make sure to put something like mesh quality or shadow quality to high and not max. At these settings, you'll receive about 40 to 100 FPS. In my personal opinion, I would suggest enabling a FPS cap and applying VSync to avoid the screen tearing and to provide a better overall frame rate. That is what I have done in this recording. And again, 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with M1 Max feature a ProMotion display, which allows for up to 120 FPS, or you may have an adaptive sync display or high refresh rate that matches 120 Hertz, or maybe it goes above that, I don't know. So what if you want to experience true 120 FPS on M1 Max? Again, I'd like to introduce you to what I'm calling Performance Plus settings. Using my on-screen recommended settings with Metal FX Performance enabled, you should get 120 FPS at 1440p. 
Playing it mostly locked 120 FPS is a real treat here, so give it a go if you have the chance. If you want to play at 4K or 2160p resolution at near max graphics, you can make this achievable with the help of Metal Effects Quality Mode. It's very important to put the FPS cap to 60. Turn on VSync and put either mesh quality or shadow quality to high and not max. This will allow for the smoothest experience at such a high resolution. It's a real treat playing this absolute gorgeous game at 4K resolution. Very quickly, I want to point out that there is only a slight difference between playing in macOS Monterey and Ventura, with Ventura being a little bit better. Apart from that, the main differences are that you won't be able to access the metal effects settings in Monterey, which is kind of essential for playing this game at higher resolutions and graphical settings. And you can't use the Metal 3 Performance HUD. Performance HUD is an on-screen overlay. It allows you to monitor gameplay performance with real-time stats and logging, memory usage, resolution, CPU and GPU render time, and frame presentation deadlines. I have a tutorial on how to set it up in the video description if you're interested. What do you think of the Resident Evil Village Mac Edition port? Are you impressed or disappointed? For me, Capcom and Apple have done an excellent job with this port, and for the most part, it has no major sacrifices, apart from the absence of ray tracing. I'm interested to see if Capcom port their other RE Engine games to Mac in the not too distant future. I guess the sales from RE8 will show them if it's worth the porting cost. I hope the work done here can be encouraging for other developers looking to port their existing or upcoming AAA games to Mac. Mac computers are still not gaming machines. The hardware and software is mostly there now, but all we need now is for the general public, developers, and even Apple to see there are people who want to play their favorite games on Mac, but can't because people won't port them because no one plays games on Mac. It's just a reversing cycle over and over. Please, 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 please consider purchasing this game even if you're not into survival horror, the more gamers we see on Apple hardware, the better it will be for us in the long run. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with new big AAA games coming to Apple Silicon in the future, such as Grid Legends and No Man's Sky. My name is Stewie, and thanks for watching. Oh my god.